there'd be no life in that thing. So your little, your little pole in your driveway, or you could you could go out to your bird bath and put goldfish in it. But if it froze, my bird bath would freeze flat to the bottom. But the way the bird bath is shaped is like this, so as the water freezes, it slides to the side. It won't crack my bird bath. Unless I get a crack in it already. Then she'll actually split the bell, fall off the pedestal being two pieces. But the way the bird bath is designed, the one I have, it's just it's like a, a nice flat cereal bowl about that deep in the middle. But if it's too deep, birds won't use it. And they'll get out there and they'll splash all around and have a good old time. But water forms a crystal structure which has six axes, and you're going to see in a few minutes some snowflakes. And there's no two flakes alike, but I've always liked looking at snowflakes. I never have taken my camera and taken a picture of them, but I know folks have. I found some on the internet. So here's some snowflakes. There's one. That's pretty to me. That's a snowflake. Now, now start. I want you to start looking at them because they all have something in common. There's one. That's another one. Actually, a flake of snow. And here's another one. And here's another one. And these are just nature's sculptures. And another one. Did you see what they all had in common? They're all round. No, not all around. Look at look at the spokes. Specs. How many spokes are there? Six. How many are there? Six. Six. Even there, how many do you count? Six. Six. Isn't that usual? Never five. Never seven. Always six. And always flat. So when you see snow falling next time, you be. You can say that's, that's more than a little white puff. <coughs> it's quite beautiful, really. Quite beautiful. Now, I tell you that water will expand just before it freezes. That's because of the crystal structure. If you were to go to an iceberg in the ocean, right, mm -hmm. and you melt that ice, would you have fresh water or salt water? I don't know. I know the ocean is salty around it, but when the ice forms, does it form without the salt? If you, were, if you got on that glacier and on, on chopped off a bit of the iceberg and put it in a little bowl and came out of Columbus and melted it and you drunk it, I don't know if it's salt or fresh. What do you think? Well, I have a question too. It's just because of the fact that it is salt water, and usually salt doesn't salt. It doesn't freeze that. Well, I don't know. It doesn't right. freeze. Right. It doesn't freeze at, at it doesn't freeze at thirty two. But won't it dissolve other ice? Because like well, you know, right here, put ice and broke, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Now, all that now that's not really dissolving ice; it's lowering the temperature as it freezes. Okay. Fresh water freezes. You know, at thirty two. Now, I don't know what, at what temperature salt water freezes. I know one thing when you, when you make ice cream. You, you take fresh water, right, before you cream into it, and you, you, you strawberries, what you want to. That goes in that, that, that stainless steel mixture, right? That goes into your ice cream bucket. Now, you put ice in, and you put salt on the ice. And what that's going to do, ice will never get below 32 degrees. You cannot freeze an ice cream if you can't get the outside below 32. And what happens, if you take a thermometer and stick it in salt water, it might read 28 degrees and still be a liquid. But what's happened inside that metal thing though? That's frozen. If, you're, if your salty ice water is at 28 degrees and it's still water, inside that little bucket where you have your fresh water, 
it is freezing and turning to ice cream. So there's no way you can make ice cream without having salt. It won't freeze because you can't drive the temperature down below 32 unless you put ice. Now, if you have your driveway and you have ice on it, when you put salt on there, all it's doing is taking the temperature and dropping the freezing point of that. So now, I don't know if it'll freeze at, at minus 45. I don't know. I don't, I don't know this day when the Titanic struck the iceberg and the ice fell on the ship. If they had built that, would they have, would they have had fresh water? I, I, I flat don't know the answer to that one. I need to find out one day because I ask myself that question all the time, but I never did take time to figure it out. If I ever live by an iceberg, I could, I could do the experiment. <laughs> Chip some off, let it melt, and I'd know then. I, I kind of I kind of suspect it's, it's salt water. I really do. But then again, if the water around it is salt, and that water is what's the water? More than iceberg. I think iceberg is salt. From Huh? And then fill it out all the way. Yeah, but you can go under it. <laughs> you can go under it. <laughs> you know, that, that famous submarine called the Nautilus. That's one. was the first one ever to go under, all the way under. Okay. That was a problem because the guy under there, they couldn't get back out. They had no radio contact. They'd been lost forever. So the folks who went under the North Pole, they had some, they had some guts. And you just... Of course, they're, they're famous now for having made that, that. See, if you didn't go under the pole, you had to go around. That took months by going under the pole. You cut your trip vastly to go from one side of the world to the other side of the world. Of course, you know, a sailing ship can't go across, but a submarine can easily go under the North Pole. And um, the ice is not very thick up there either. I mean, they, they see the ice is under, under is real, like, Sticky things coming down. It's not, it's not smooth like an ice uh, in your drink. But the thing about ice, though, ice is always less dense than water. So water gets under it and holds it up. Ice floats. Unless you put it in um, alcohol, then ice sinks. Because ice is more dense than alcohol, and it will sink to the bottom. I told some folks, and I used to watch Dallas, that TV show. They always drink all the time. They always drink it. But I looked one day and their ice, sometimes it was floating. That's just colored water. And a few times it was on the bottom. And I know that, that Ron White, that comedian, his ice is always sunk. He's really drinking. I guess you can, you know, there's no illegal thing about it. But ice floats because it's not as dense. It's the, script, it's the crystal structure that makes it not as dense. It, it'll shrink, shrink, shrink spread out and solid. If you put, if you take like a mason jar and you fill it full of water and you put it outside to freeze overnight, you'll crack that glass. It will shrink, 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 fill up all the inside and when it expands, crack the glass. And next morning when you get up, the glass is empty because the water run out of it. Same thing happens to your car. If your car loses antifreeze and you keep putting water in, over time, it's going to be all water, and the first time it freezes. Now, you know, cars have freeze plugs. Did you know that? Yeah. That's a freeze plug, and designed to push that plug out and not break your motor. That's the design. You did it work. But then, if the plug is out, and it warms up, and water flows, and that crank the motor up, you got a problem. A lot of folks don't look to the freeze plug in there or not. They just crank up and drive off. Yes. Uh, what about um, an iceberg that can also be fresh water or at least much less salty than seawater for a couple reasons? Icebergs tend to break off from glaciers as they reach the sea, and glaciers start out as per fresh precipitation that is fresh, and fresh sure. water freezes at a higher temperature than salt water. So when fresh water ice mm -hmm. contacts seawater, uh, what happens is that happens. some of the water component of the seawater freezes and the remaining seawater gets very salty and more salty. You know, I wonder who was the first one to realize how to make ice cream by putting salt. Would you call it? Would you call it? I probably wouldn't. 
If I know, I know why you did that, but who was the first one who decided it? I can make ice cream if I, if I put salt in this Blue ice oil. and make it drop down. Is it extra credit? Huh? What'd you say? Indians, probably. Possibly so. Possibly so. Or it could be blue oil. But there, there's no way you can make ice cream using regular ice. You'll never get it cold enough to freeze the stuff inside. And I often wonder if, if you put in more salt, would it freeze even faster? I recall as a child, our job was sit on the cooler while the men crank. You'd be wiggling on it. It would, it would, yeah, you'd be wiggling. Now the electric, I don't like the electric because they stop too soon. Hand crank, you can just keep on making stuff really good. But um, you know, I haven't had any home in ice cream ever. I love it. <clears throat> now, this is about a pond. It will freeze over totally. You can drive across it. But under it is still water. Because the ice itself insulates like like an oasis is under the ice. Fish are swimming around. Plants are thriving. What the frogs? I don't remember that. Frogs will dive down and bury the head in the mud. And then their metabolism slows down so much that they get oxygen through their skin and they get just enough oxygen so they don't die but when it, when it thaws out warms up and they pick up and then they got to put the top and start breathing now my trick is how does a frog know when it's time to take a dive i don't know now, if you go down too soon it thaws up they will come back up and breathe because they got to be so cold that the heart's pumped Thump. That don't take much oxygen. Well, you're going thump, 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 and you need more power if you got time to breathe air. But you know, I, fish can get sunburned and fish can drown. Of all, do you think fish sure can drown? Sure can. That one trait about water becoming less dense than it freezes. That's why aquatic environments don't die. And down here in South, that's no well, problem because it's freeze. I might I'm a total might freeze, but Lake Alder ain't gonna freeze. Too much water. Aquatic should be underwater. What should it be? Aquatic. The very first line? Um no, the, the second aquatic. line of Aquatic. Fourth, yeah, aquatic. That should be on the map. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I gotta find where it was. Mm -hmm. Bambi. Yeah. Uh, Bambi. <laughs> it looks like a, a doe. Of course, a doe, but I wonder if it's a fawn or how old it is. But if you look behind it, there's, there's still water behind that eye. So it's not very thick right there, and none of those pointy hooves. We tell me it quite falls down. But the one I like the best is that picture right there. Cutting across from nowhere, icebreaker. It'll freeze behind him. Icebreakers have a really, really strong that's a coast guard breaker there. And they had to get to the Great Lakes and open and open these boat channels so boats can still traverse the Great Lakes. But I imagine that's a cold job to have mm -hmm. an icebreaker. Okay. Now, here we go back to that, that bonding. Hydrogen bonds are just, they're just critical. Those bonds let water stay in water for a long range of temperature before it turns to steam or turns to ice. It also lets water carry a lot of heat. And those bonds can expand and the more heat it carries, the more they expand. You know, if, if water froze at 50 degrees, how would that affect life on the earth? 
At 50, it'd be frozen out there. You couldn't drink any water. 32 degrees is pretty cold, but if water had, had a, a never a temperature would be water in, like thaw between 80 and 50, you that wouldn't be able to crap. You need the high range temperatures. I tell you what, the at what temperature do, at what temperature does water boil on the Fahrenheit scale? Two one two twelve. When it's hot outside, is it even halfway there? Think about it. When it's hot outside, what do you call hot? 100 degrees? 101 degrees? You ain't even halfway to boiling. You're outside there going, man, it's so hot out here. You're not even halfway to boiling. If we got closer to the sun, we'd be in trouble. Or if the sun expanded, we'd be in trouble. We're sitting in the perfectly right place to have life on the earth. Any closer? We'd be too hot. Any farther away, we'd be too cold. I mean, we're right in the exact perfect location. Some think that's by chance. I ain't sure I do or not. Alright? Since so specific heat is how much heat. You now your blood is, is mainly water. And inside you is 98.6. When you start to get hot, you get red faced. Because the blood can because the, the blood vessels in your skin open up, let more blood flow through. Blood gives off the heat. You feel warm, but your heart feels 98.6. Even when you're cold and you're shivering, you feel cold, but your heart goes Hawaii. <laughs> it just it just it's creepy inside. Now if you're if you're a fish like Goldie up there, as you know as temperature drop, you slow down. And if it gets too high, you better find shelter because you can't you have no way of and dogs pen. That's how they change heat. Birds do the same thing. You watch a bird outside, it's real hot, the beak is open. The beak is open. And a lot of times the wings are kind of like this. Mm -hmm. They try and cool itself off. Especially cormorants. They do a good job of it. Um, right here on the Celsius scale, water has a 100 degree span. That it can be water and not turn to ice or whatever. But what if the span was from 20 to 40? That'd be terrible. That'd be a 20 degree range you could live in, and we couldn't live like that. Because Earth, Earth can change that much over the course of a day. So water, by having a wide range to be liquid in, is perfect. Now, here in Georgia, do you ever see it change that much in day's time? Not often. Yeah. <laughs> I don't recall. I mean, wake up and it's 80 and then it becomes 100 degrees. Yeah. I don't know if I've seen that. The desert does that. Desert is famous for hot days and freezing cold nights. So desert is... I, I, when I first read that, I thought, desert. Because in the summer, in the, in the daytime, you get a t-shirt, trying to keep cool. Nighttime, you pull a jacket on. It's so cold. Because that would be a span. And if water had that narrow range of freezing and boiling, that wouldn't work. Wouldn't work a bit. So by water having from zero to hundred Celsius or thirty-two to one twelve, uh, two twelve on the Fahrenheit. That gives water a range to change temperature and still stay liquid, which is important, very important. You've seen this before, this formula, and I, I, I got a variety of ways to do it. In the Arizona desert, I mean, you can wake up at 20 degrees and at midday you're at 45. That's quite a change. And the th the, those formulas are the ones that you see everywhere. I often modify them to a body cap. I, got a, I like to work with decimals. Like 9 over 5, I like to use 1.8 instead. It's just easier to be. And 5 over 9, well, if you do it their way, you'll multiply by 5 and divide by 9. 
I just don't like using fractions. I know how. I just don't like doing it. So I'm going to change. On my calculator, I would divide 5 by 9 and get the answer and put it in my, in my memory. Then work the problem and finally multiply by the memory and I get my answer. It's just to make it much simpler to take those fractions out and change them to decimals. But that's just me. Um, but you've done this already, so there's no problem. Those are two men they're looking for. Those are real people, Fahrenheit and Celsius, and they're the ones that the monitor are named for. So that's the, so that, that was the words on Latin. That's people's names. Send it in, man. He looks mean. He looks like a man. He looks like a man. Is it a woman? She looks like um, a woman. Is it possible they could have known each other? No. It's possible. Well, yeah. Is it possible? In mm -hmm. a small gap, yeah. Let, let's figure 1720. Yeah. Were they both living in 1720? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, one of them had not died until 36, so yeah, I think they both lived in 1720. One didn't live so long, did he? Oh, sales just lived, so what? 47 years? That, that's not long so Of course, Fahrenheit did a pretty good while. But, um, Fahrenheit is the older thermometer. Celsius is a new kid as far as times. A lot of folks thought Celsius would have been around forever. No, Fahrenheit is the older thermometer. Celsius came later when we began to use the, um, the metric system. Celsius is designed for metrics. Um, Fahrenheit is designed for what we call standard. This guy know one thing. I asked one time in high school, he said, what's colder? <coughs> 32 degrees Fahrenheit? Or uh, zero degrees Celsius. The same thing. Zero degrees Celsius. Same thing. What's wrong with that? That is same. It's the same. They can't get past the numbers. They get. They can't get past the numbers. I said they're both the same temperature. If you're at 30 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit and you're at zero Celsius, that's the exact same temperature. And some high school kids just can't grasp that. They, their mind zero is smaller than 32. Like and that's where they stop. And, but see, on the scale of temperature, they are the same. This dress like but a, a light. I want you to know that these two, these two thermometers are named for men, and not some mysterious Latin word. Those are the authors of it. So, and Fahrenheit is twenty, you know, eighteen years older. Men looking guy. I <laughs> uh, look like old Fahrenheit might be have an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> is this an actual picture? Is that a portrait? It looks That's so a portrait. Okay. Oh. They didn't have Polaroids back then. It almost looks like an actual picture. It looks so mean. That's, well, now, we had some artists who could draw really well. I remember that. We had yeah, that's pretty draw good. This portrait. But those are, I don't think those are, those are Polaroids. You know, they painted him angry. But, um, <laughs> I've seen, when I, when I looked online so for them, I saw a variety of pictures of these two guys. And um, a few times I couldn't recognize Celsius from a younger picture. But the one you see on there, I saw that picture over and over and over again, so I used him as my... But you can find other pictures of Celsius, and look at the eyes and nose, you can see it's him, but his hair is different. That might be a wig he's wearing. Yeah, it doesn't look like a hair. I think it's a wig. Yeah. They wore wigs back then. Yeah. One thing they had such bad, they had such bad allies, they cut the hair off. They wore a wig to make up for it. And then they had lights. Because yeah, of they the had lights. Like, big time. The wig doesn't help. All right, so... <coughs> this thing? question is not on here. I wonder, do you know the name of the three states of matter? Matter can exist three ways. Solid, liquid, Solid, and gas. Liquid and gas. Liquid and gas. Okay, now. And plasma. Up here, 
This stuff is called water. What do you call the solid state of water? Ice. The ice. ice. What do you call the liquid state of water? Mm -hmm. I call it water. water. Mm -hmm. And what do you call the gaseous state? Boiling steam. Either steam or water vapor. Okay. Either steam or water. Because you can, you know, if I put on my table here a little cup of water, came back next week, it's still going to be there, you reckon? Will it still be there? Okay. It will evaporate, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I can make it faster than I heat it, can it? So, water vapor in the air won't scald you. Mm -hmm. But it contains the same amount of heat as steam did. When I, when I boil, when I'm making um, oatmeal, I want it to be soupy, then I don't boil it as long, do I? If I want it to be thicker, the longer I boil it, the thicker it becomes. Because I'm boiling away the water, right? Well, same thing here. Um, if it just sits here, it will pick up energy from the air, and at 100 degrees, it will move away. Now in the room here, it never gets 100 degrees. You would think, how in the world can that evaporate away? It's because the molecules are moving and bumping each other. Now, if, if it's cooler, it won't, it won't evaporate fast, right? But if it's warmer, it'll evaporate faster. And if you boil it, it'll be gone before you know it. So, you need you need that water to stay a liquid because that's, that's, that's the way you are when your cells are liquid, your reactions inside your body are all, all happen in liquids. You don't need an ice and you don't need a, a gas. That would, gas would kill you and an ice would also. If you were stranded in the Arctic and you had no matches and you couldn't melt that ice, you'd die of no water. It's all it is. If you couldn't get it changed back into the, the liquid state. As a matter of fact, the, the Eskimos use the refrigerator. That makes sense still? Wait, they use it? Or why would Eskimos? They do. They use refrigerators. You know why? <laughs> now, why do I use a refrigerator? <laughs> why would they use one for? For the same reason we do. Keep it warm. But why? To preserve their food. Yeah, I don't want, up there, you don't want to drop below 40, do you? Yeah, because you can get like freezer or something. If you just put it, Super you can put it outside in the snow. Put the bears away. It's going to be frozen solid. Mm -hmm. And Eskimo uses a refrigerator to keep it from freezing. And I use one to get it cold. Now, my fridge ain't going to freeze it except an icebox area. Mm -hmm. But an Eskimo uses, a lot of folks thought that was stuck. What would Eskimo use to keep it from freezing? What good is milk if it's frozen solid? So they use theirs to, to prevent the freezing of water. Because ice, you know, water's in that milk, right? Mm -hmm. What happens to you if you freeze solid? Mm -hmm. You got it. High, high All right. So we're lucky that water as a liquid has a wide range. 100 degree range on the Celsius scale. Now I like using Celsius because 100 is easy to think. That's a nice round number. Man, what is, what is 212 minus 32? Because that's the range on the Fahrenheit scale. That's not a round number to me. That's an, ob that's an oblong number. Mm -hmm. Well, I say 100. I can, I can, that's 100. I can see that. That's one heavy. And that makes it nice because it only get it only get 50 degrees Celsius around this place. What is half of 212? 106. Ever got to be 106 in Georgia? Yeah. I say maybe rarely. Yeah. Where would you find 106? There's a Phoenix. Yes, Valley, Arizona. 110, 115 out there. Yeah. What lives out there? Yeah. In Death Valley? Um, lizards. Maybe a lizard. You can find a rock down under. A snake, scorpion. I don't know any towns out there. There might be a town or two. But I bet you the bill is going to be a tremendous high to keep your house cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So, 
having that wide range is really nice because obviously salt water has even wider range. Mm -hmm. But salt would not function in you. Salt would make you have to make blood pressure. Takes a whole lot to boil water. The water can absorb so much heat before it changes. It's a whole lot. That's specific heat. Water is a very good cooling agent. It can carry off tons of heat and get rid of it. That's why water is using your car to keep your car cool. It keeps you cool. All materials have a specific heat. Styrofoam. I think it has a high or low specific heat. High. You can put water in styrofoam, I mean, a coffee and I can burn your finger in styrofoam. The so styrofoam has a high, high, high specific heat. How about, how about, if you pour coffee into a tin cup and grab it in your hand, Ooh. would you say tin has a higher or low specific, specific heat? Ooh. Real low. It's going to hot real fast. You better grab that tin then. Okay? So that's about specific heat. This is for water specifically. Now after you write that, let me explain what that means. I think it's um I think it's meter over meter. But joules like you know amount, amount of energy. So right here just um uh, it would take 4.19 joules of heat to make water go from 95 degrees to 96 degrees. It would take that much. But look at alcohol. How much would take alcohol go from 94 to 96 or 94 to 95? Less than half. Which heats up faster? Water or alcohol? Water. Alcohol heats up real fast. It don't have the same specific heat. The water's not a basic I mean, Alcohol couldn't stay hot. So specific heat is basically how fast it warms up? Or? Exactly. Okay. The more heat it takes, the slower you warm up. The more heat it takes, so for example, to change one degree of water, it takes Let's say four joules. And alcohol to go one degree, it would take two joules. Well, that means it would take a lot more to heat water than to heat alcohol. And everything has specific heat. Gold, lead, everything has a specific heat. But in water, as it goes, water is pretty high. Water is pretty high. If water had a lower specific heat, it would boil away like at 80 degrees. That, that's perfect outside. Ain't yeah, had that happening. So water is the thing that makes life function. And there are a number of reasons, and specific heat is one of them, it takes a whole lot to boil away water. And by the same token, it can carry so much heat away from your inside that you don't overheat yourself. I went online and looked, and I saw all kinds of, I was going to put a chart right here, but I thought, no, I don't go that far. But there's charts of, of all the different kind of metals and then specific heat things. It really amazes you how some of them don't take much heat to, to get going. Now there's ammonia. Not even one. And ammonia evaporates real fast.
doesn't take very much heat to heat up ammonia, not compared to water alcohol. Just one night from that. Ammonia evaporates real fast. But because of the, the heat water carries. Georgia, what kind of climate would you say Georgia has? Small? Humid? Humid? I've heard that it's hot here and wet. Our west is hot and not wet. And they say that it's rougher here to be hot and wet than hot and dry. Now you folks are never living where I, I, I've been in Texas for a train, and that it gets hot. But I didn't suffer like I do here. A lot of soldiers come for being in the train. They can't stand the heat enough. They, they don't. They don't. They don't mind the heat. It's the heat and the humidity that saps them out. You can be in, in Texas where I know in Austin. My son lives there. They had a hundred degree, hundred day, hundred degree weather, and he said, "Daddy, it's hot." But not like it is in Georgia. If it had been Georgia, it'd be people, people, people dying. Mm -hmm. So 100 degrees and 100 degrees, obviously. <laughs> 100 degrees tied to humidity makes it, makes it a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. And 100 degrees here, uh, we're, we're kind of, in a way, kind of tropical. Mm -hmm. Columbus is pretty, pretty nice about it. I mean, a lot of folks who can't stand the cold, they, they come down here. Mm -hmm. Or Florida, or that. Um, I would I'd have no desire to live up where it gets so cold it freezes your pipes, but uh, I, I don't want to spend every morning fixing busted pipes. You won't find it until it's out. And you find you get a water running in your house and oh crap, we got a pipe busted. Your pipe exploded. And even up north I understand they have dipsticks going in your car, mm -hmm. which are electric and they heat the car. It gets oil hot so when you crank the car. That old thick oil won't run to your car. So that dipstick is plugged into the wall and to your car, and that's like a little, little heat device. I don't want to live like that. That's just me personally. If our ammonia, if our ocean were ammonia, we wouldn't have any oceans. It'd be gone. But the water can stand, look, it took up so much heat, the ocean stayed there. What's it mean to receive? They're, they're thawing out. And if you thaw out, what happens if, if, if you have if you have a flat piece of wood and ice on top of it, the flat wood is the ocean, it's, it's the land. As the ice melts, would the wood go up or go down? As the wood went up, the oceans do what? So savannah would become inland. And of course, Columbus is being further away. And out there in the ocean, where the shelf is, 
that night, that might become a new beach town. So, and they have they have sticks out, stakes out, and the earth is rising because the ice is melting, and the weight gone, the earth gets to come up. The question is though, is that something that we're doing, or is that something that nature does over time? Some folks say. We are not doing this to Earth. It is Earth cycle. We're accelerating it. But the problem is that we haven't kept record that long. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the cycle is. We assume that a lot of it, you know, the, the seasons out there. The Earth is very, you know Earth is very seasonal, right? Mm -hmm. So we're wondering, like pendulum, ice age, no ice age. Are we swinging to no ice age? We're going to swing back in time. So I don't know... Because I know the oceans absorb carbon dioxide. There are a lot of folks who think that all the all the propaganda, as they call it, for the global warming is just a way to get money yeah. for various causes. Um, record temperatures, you can't deny those. Can't deny those. At the end we have record freeze points too. Yeah. This winter time there's gonna be a probably record lows and so there should be no more record lows, should there? If we're actually warming up, there should never be another record low, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they happen. But they do happen. So the question is, if we're warming up, why do we have some record lows? And so I don't know myself. I don't one thing. I don't think I'm big enough to for a Bobby Tech to affect the earth. But how about a thousand Bobby Tech? Or a million Bobby Tech? That could do it. And one more thing also that uh, the professor brought up the other day, he said, we cannot destroy the earth. What we can do is destroy the earth's capacity to hold life. Mm -hmm. we, can't, we can't kill the rock, can we? But we might kill the rock's ability to grow trees, to make oxygen, and I'll breathe. So I know we can't destroy the earth. But can we destroy the earth's ability to keep us still. That word. But I ain't no tree hugger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> but I'm not going to also look away. I'm, there's something going on. <laughs> All right. Now, on the lower level where elements are, hydrogen bonds is the reason why DNA works. DNA, DNA unzips itself like a zipper and it zips back up. For it to do anything, it has to unzip. One half of it has to give a command. And then when it's over, it zips back up. The hydrogen bonds are weak. That allows, if those are covalent bonds, they would never unzip. Life would stop, but, but DNA can function because hydrogen bonds allow themselves to be broken and then reattached right back. Because the two strands of DNA, they're hooked together across the middle, kind of like a ladder is, with hydrogen bonds. But for that DNA to work, it must unzip itself so one side can be red. And the hydrogen bonds being weak, they let it unzip. And then it is zipped right now. There's a thing called polymerase. That's the enzyme that unzips it. And zips it right back up. But hydrogen bonds is what you're going to see in making that all possible. In evolution, some folks believe it, some folks don't. I don't care if you believe it or not. I, I do want you to know why you believe it or why you don't. I'm never going to sit here and fuss with you one way or the other. I got my own opinion about it. And just based on things I know, but when you get too far to argue evolution versus creation, no minds ever change. <laughs> Think about it. No minds ever change. They don't leave mad at each other. 
But I do, I do believe things evolve because the flu evolves every year to a new strain. I see that. And we have the fossil record where we can see how animals evolve over time. Yeah. See, according to my mama, is a died in the wool Christian. And she thinks by creation, everything here right now has always been here from the beginning. I said, well, mama, then how come AIDS, he said, because AIDS had been suppressed. Mm -hmm. They've been here the whole time, buddy. Yeah. And I thought, well, I can't argue that. Somebody built up something. Like, it's like genes, right? Some genes are inside you, dormant, and all of a sudden, like a volcano. They erupt. So I'm wondering, well, maybe I'm only got a point there. Cause, see, I first thought that maybe AIDS evolved from another disease. And mama said, no, Bobby, it's been here the whole time. It it's just that now it's rare and ugly head. And, and I said, well, I can't say you're wrong, Mama. I don't know. I can't say she's wrong. But she tell me I'm wrong, though. Oh, well, she's very opinionated. Is it her way? Or the highway. But, but see, a person educated and understands there are other opinions of mine. I want to hear yours. And I might walk away from it. And I might incorporate it, but, you know, According to what she said, the Bible says, everything here today has always been here. I know flu changes. Mm -hmm. I know flu changes. The mutant. But she said, no, it's just that, that flu, the flu we're going to have in five years is here right now. It's hiding. Conditions aren't right for it to make itself known. Well, can I say she's wrong? No. I really can't. I don't, I don't agree with that. But I can't say she's wrong. And that gets that you mad. So we, me and Mama discuss things and neither one is going to change her mind. We both walk out mad. We ain't going to talk about it anymore. We know there's no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no game. I do like to hear opinions though. Because you know, I, you know, if I'll tell a person I, I don't buy that. I, mean, I don't mind you thinking that, but I don't buy it. Don't call me stupid because I don't. And I ain't call you stupid because you don't. Because I'll tell you why I think the way I do. I'd like to hear your thoughts, and I might modify mine, I might not, but I ain't going to change it. Because Einstein said it. I feel I'm good as Einstein is. My mind thinks it. So I had to watch out for some people that they, they, they want to impose a will upon you. Uh, change your opinion to match mine, because that's how it is. That's wrong. That would be a fight every time. Maybe they have the right to think for themselves. One bond ain't too, it's like a bunch of sticks. One of them ain't too good, but a hundred sticks make a strong, strong substance. <clears throat> I want to look ahead just a minute, I'll go back. I need, I, I need to put a picture on here to show you these bonds. I didn't think about that. Does it make sense to you? The more bonds you have, the stronger the bond is going to be overall. I'm going to show you a picture. I got another PowerPoint I use for another class. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to show you. I got a picture that's going to, I think, make you understand what I'm talking about. I think I'll find it. It's in this class right here. All right. This is DNA. See those? Those, those two sets of dashed lines, mm -hmm. that's two hydrogen bonds. How many bonds do you see here? Three. Three. So two and three and two, two again and three and three. It's not just one bond across, is it? No. That makes that circle powerful. And to make something, I must unzip these bonds and separate these strands from one strand to make something like this. 
and then this leaves the nucleus and goes outside. So that's too big to leave the nucleus. It won't leave the nucleus. But what happened, it will unzip itself. And one side will then be the mold to make this stuff. This stuff then leaves as a messenger, goes out into the cell and gets something done that the nucleus wanted done. But it ain't just a single bond. There's at least two every time you have a... This is your ladder. See how it's twisted? That's like a step ladder. That's, this is a helix. That's a double helix. And it's twisted. And to make it work, it must untwist, break those bonds, separate, and then one side will make this stuff. This then leaves your nucleus and goes to the ribosome. Well, the ribosome makes maybe more hair or eye color or whatever. But the thing about it is, it's, just, it's not just a single bond across. I mean, in these three here, I see seven bonds. And of course, the whole thing, good Lord, there are thousands of them. So I wanted to get across to you was from the this thing right here. So, it's, see, it's not just one; it's hundreds. So, polymerase is a hydrogen bond. Polymerase is the enzyme. enzyme that breaks those bonds to allow the enzyme to allow the DNA to separate. Okay. And we're going to do more of that later on, because I got they told me from state to describe translation, transcription. And that's going to be in that. I don't want to do it now. I don't know what you're talking about. I know you don't. Know. <laughs> I, I don't want. You, you got to crawl where you walk. I'm trying to make you fly. All right. So it's so, but the point is, though, you, we said we said it's two or three hydrogen bonds. You mm -hmm. just saw them. Mm -hmm. There's two sometimes. There's three sometimes. It's not just one bond. One would not hold. It'd be like a little strand of chewing gum. It's fun apart. But three bonds and, and two bonds at one time. That makes it pretty strong. Strong connection. DNA will not just fall apart. It must be unzipped on purpose. But if you don't unzip it, DNA won't work. And you wouldn't make more hair and more cells and more of your stuff. Alright? Now here's another thing good about water that the hydrogen bonds allow. Hydrogen, I mean, water can dissolve more stuff than any other liquid can. Now, if, you, if you're the dissolver, you call the solvent. If you're the stuff, you call the solute. If I'm making Kool-Aid, the water is my solvent, and the pack of Kool-Aid is my solute. What does your blood carry around in your body? Red blood cells. Red blood cells. Oxygen. Medication. Food. Water. Water flows. Could your water be as toothpaste is? Good pump out in your body. It's gotta be it's gotta remain liquid. It's gotta remain liquid. Maybe if you have high speed. What happens if a nurse, by mistake, gives you a shot with an air bubble in it? Yeah, you're going to kill you. It's either going to kill you or it's going to kill you. Air bubble in it. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's water, if water got too hot, it'll turn to gas. That's an air bubble. If you get really hot, you'll make your own embolism inside you. I don't have to give you a shot. You'll make it shut. Ever seen, ever seen water boil from a pan? Mm -hmm. How it's, it just boops up from the bottom. And when it opens and out comes the gas, that's what you call boiling water. It's just all, you know, violent. But if you ever look at the bottom, if you had, if you had clear pots and pans and look, at the bottom you'll see it starting to bulge as, as gas forms. All of a sudden it'll break loose and the gas will fall, go to the top, but it gets there, it ruptures, and out comes steam. That's your boiling water. Well, if, you're, if, you're, if your water got too hot, it's going to turn to a gas bubble. And that's, 
you, that that's very likely to happen because by then your hair is burned off anyway. That's something to do with. Huh? People haven't known, like the temperature inside, to be so cautious. That's what yeah, I can just do it. It's okay. But um, you got you know, something you got to remember when you were when you were, when you develop inside your mama, you're airtight. <laughs> they know what they don't air. That's the most amazing thing. Your cells develop and they're airtight. There's no air in that blood system, so you wouldn't make out of mama, would you? And I can't. You know, I give you a shot. They always thump. Squirt the day. That gets the air bubble out. Folks who give some injections of insulin, they learn that lesson. They stress that. Be sure there's no bubble. It has to waste a little bit of that juice. And you know there's no bubble inside there. Because the air bubble is unforgiving. It's the end of Yes, sir. Um, how come steroid shots are only gel? Why then? If you can't insul uh, like inject yourself with solids, like steroids are like gel. Steroids are a fat. Steroids are all fat. Fats have a lower temperature which they become solid. <laughs> Steroids though have a, that's a double-edged sword. As you might know, the, on one hand they help you, on the other hand they hurt you. You have to be real careful on how you stop steroids. Um, proteins come in, you know, three dimensions, like a, like a set of dyes. There's, there's a top and a bottom and there's a thickness. And proteins are your enzymes. And they, they kick a reaction into government. You ever seen folks in high school egg a fight on? Yeah. They don't want to get involved. They want to egg it on. Hit him, hit him. He, he, I saw him dating your boyfriend, or vice versa. <laughs> All the other troublemakers, they are catalysts. They want to make something happen, yet they don't want to get involved with it. That's a, that's a catalyst. And all your, all, your, all your enzymes, they make something happen, but they don't get involved. And when it's over, they're still free and clear. And the best example is, I was taught in high school all the time. You had this one guy who's a coward and he don't want to get involved. He wants you two guys to fight. So he'll, he'll make things up. The girls bad about too. Just to get their good. Alright. You said make something happen, then what? Then they step back. They don't get involved. They don't they do not become part of the reaction. Water forms a good buffer, a good shield. What forms your buffer now? They say it's going away. It's called a something layer. Ozone layer. Ozone, layer. Ozone is O3. O3. I don't know if it's going away or not, Franklin. For in the early Earth, when Earth first, you know, my mom won't buy this. But she's saying it was created perfectly, right? But the early Earth, they said there was, there was no protective layer in the atmosphere, and the UV radiation would hurt life. Well, if that's the case, then how life even, how do life keep, how do life stay? In the ocean. In the ocean. They well, I know life, basically, it, it, even when the Lord made the world, He made the fish first. That's even, that, that, that's no problem in fish. Water, as you know, can you get sunburn on a cloudy day? Yes. No, you can't see the sun, it'll cook you though. That's that radiation comes through. Um, a lot of folks will wear a t-shirt when they're in the ocean to keep the, the sun away. If you're underwater, can you get sunburn? Yes, you can. 
Um, it's the ozone that we that we know. It doesn't absorb it. It reflects it back into space, so it never gets here. But UV radiation causes skin cancer, as you know. Causes a tan. Uh, there are some folks who who get so many skin and get so many tans, but by their 60, their skin looks like leather. It's not even pleasant to look at anymore. Because they, you just can't keep doing that, and they have no harmful side effects. Um, my family, they're all tree surgeons. They work outdoors all the life. And I did too, until I got hurt. But we had to watch out for skin cancer because folks take shit off the work. You'll find things start developing back. And you want it to be benign and not malignant, but little mold starts to change and find out what's going on. The first sign of skin cancer is a mold that becomes sore to touch or delicate to touch or starts to change colors. So you need to lift your body when you bathe to see if things are changing. Because they are, don't wait for it to get better. Because cancer does not get better with age, as you probably know. It only get worse. But all cancer is curable. Completely curable in the early stages. When you don't go to the doctor. By the time you finally go to the doctor because you're hurt, they got you. So a lot of folks just don't go. I mean, I, I'm bad about it because I got to teach school, I got lessons, I'm busy, got to go fishing, I ain't got time to go to the doctor. <laughs> Until you get so sick you gotta go. By then though, you're in your deathbed. It'd be amazing what a what a what a a visit a doctor would mean to you when you went when you were not sick. Let them see you when you're in good shape. So when you do get sick, they got something to bring you back to. Say, oh, I see now a difference here. Otherwise, it just gets this and gets that and gets this and gets that. So they finally find the answer. And then we get mad because they've been diagnosed. We tie their hands behind their back, try to make them find what's wrong with you. And y'all mentioned this about the ocean. First form of life. I, I, I had no problem with that. It came from the ocean. Deep in the ocean so they couldn't be hurt by UV radiation. Of course, you know, fish evolving amphibians and they got onto the land and then the sun hit them. So they developed scales to help protect their body. Uh, we, have, we have a pigment that we have. Black people have a natural, white people develop it if we get the sun very much. So natural pigmentation designed to block the UV rays. Now albino doesn't have it at all. They can't be outside. Okay. Well not, not outside, it's not a real. Alright, let's see what we got next. I'm just looking. And I'll go back. How far, how far are we along in this thing? Uh-huh. Is that it? Yes, Mr. T, can we go back to 12 and 13? Right. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Does that mean we have a test on this? Well, now, I'm going to do one test tomorrow, like I'm doing it. And the test we do, this will be on Sunday. Okay. I will do two tests at one time. Even though I would have, I would not have. If I had a test now, I would have done a test tomorrow. But here's how it's going to work. 